Finishing Golden Kingdom in the first try is actually really easy. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it and you should be able to reproduce it on your own account. My name is Harambi, welcome. We're gonna get right into it. I have a little list with some priorities. So we're gonna go over the general ideas of how we play the event. Then we're gonna go over my lineup and then we're gonna go over the blessings. Now, like I said, you should be able to reproduce this on your own account. The same thing I'm doing on my main, I'm also doing on my 35 million power farm. And I've been able to do this for three years straight. So ever since I was at around 50 million power on my main. So it should be said though, that you might have to do, you know, might have to change one or two things according to your commanders and all right but the general idea should apply to pretty much everybody so general ideas of how what what do we do in the event itself playing the game so there is no specific path for opening the fog i just go anyway then I don't take chances. I don't like chances. I like things I can rely on. I know I am better than the event. I know it can't beat me. So why would I take a chance? Why would I have the game dictate what I can do and not do? So that means when it comes to the healing hut, you know, with the rework Golden Kingdom, we can now take either a healing or a blessing. I always heal unless I am at a 100% troop count. The reason is the blessing gives you a chance for something that you might use or might not use and it might be so-so or it might be good or it might be bad, whatever. So why would I not take the healing? Because I just know what I get, which is healing. And it's a lot of healing. And the thing is with losing troops, it's a snowball effect, right? Like 10, losing 10% of your troops isn't the worst thing in the world, but it really matters once you go to the next fight, because now you deal less damage and you concede more damage. So the less troops you have, the more troops you are actually going to lose. So because of that, I'm trying to keep my troop count as high as possible, meaning I take the heal over the blessing always, unless I'm at 100% troop count. Then I avoid the purple guardians completely. A lot of people kill them on the first couple of floors and you can do that if you know what you are doing. Otherwise avoid them. I really value the purple ladder and the eye so I know where they are or I can remove them or well replace them. And yeah, I just avoid them. Once again, um, you are going to lose troops against them and it's a snowball effect. It's the same thing on the first couple of floors. Like I said, a couple of people kill them. It gives you a chance at a blessing. I don't like the chance because I do know I am going to lose troops. So why would I do that? Why would I have the game? Why would I give the game a chance to ruin what I want to do? That is um, basically the, well, actually we can talk about the recruits for a second. So the recruits are, the commanders you take are the same as you have. So if you have a Quan Yu at 5111, then the recruit is going to be 5111. If, it's, uh, if yours is expertise, then the recruit is expertise. That means take commanders you have been working on. Also, the recruits are crucial to a really good run in Golden Kingdom. You can just use them as cannon fodder if you have a legendary guardian where you know, okay, I'm gonna run into issues. This is going to deal a lot of damage. You can just use one or two of the recruits, have them fight, lose, and then you use your usual lineup. The recruits will have taken away like 10 to 20% from the legendary guardian, making it easier for your um, normal setup to be successful and lose less troops. So that is it for the general idea. So we don't take chances. We take the healing of a blessing. I avoid the purple guardians and we make sure we um, take the right recruits. So then we can go over the lineup. 
In the video, you see I'm using Richard, and that is my first priority. We need a tanky march with healing. Behind Richard, in fact, there is Zenobia because of the group heal she has. So I'm using her over Charles Martel, for example. And then we are going to use this tank march on a solo lane against two marches, which allows us to lose less troops because now for example, like you see right now in this fight, we had um, CL in the off lane. And CL, of course, deals a lot of damage. So you might want to overload the off lane to kill him quicker. While Richard is not um, losing a lot of troops because he is so tanky and beca because the march has two different healing spells. So first priority tanky march with healing. Just to make sure, on my farm I'm actually using, I think it is Lohar with Scipio and sometimes I'm using Boudica, so Lohar and Boudica. The second point would be overloading the offlane. Um, so like I said, we have Charles Martel on a solo lane to overload the offlane. This is fairly important because Whoever is on the, on the offlane is going to die really quick and then those two marches from your offlane can just run to the tank and help them or your other lane. Then um, for the third priority is the healing commanders. Behind In this video, behind Boudica, I have Ramses over Artemisia for example because he has a healing spell. I usually also use Tao Tao over Joan of Arc Prime behind Nevsky simply because of the healing spots. It's just more valuable than dealing some more damage. However, in this video I forgot about it and used Joan of Arc. But yeah, make sure you are using healing commanders. It's going to have a lot of synergy with the blessings we are going to pick and with the positioning of our marches. We're gonna get into that in a minute. So then for AOE damage, that is always one of the questions, like AOE damage, how important is it really in all of Rise of Kingdoms? With a reworked um, Golden Kingdom, one AOE march is absolutely enough. If you have more, that is completely fine. But don't go out of your way to make sure you have more. So don't get rid of a strong march just in order to have more AOE damage. I myself, I'm using CL with YSG and if I want it, I can actually one hit, just one hit with one single skill, a green guardian. So that's absolutely enough. You don't really need more. If you have more naturally with the commanders you have available, of course, that's awesome. So we're gonna go over this um, once again. We have the tanky march with the healing. We have overloading the offlane. We have healing commanders and one AOE march is actually enough. So then we're gonna go over the blessings. The first priority is the frontline healing. So like I said, we are using Richard on a solo lane and we always keep him in the front lane and we completely focus on the front lane. So as you can see in the video, I'm always having four marches standing in the front lane and then I have whatever march helping one lane on the back line. Now that is because of the front line healing blessing. It recovers, I think, 5,000 units every 25 seconds. And this has been nerfed with the new Golden Kingdom. It used to be much stronger, but still for, at least for the Legendary Guardian, it is still very strong and there's going to be more synergy with um, other blessings we are going to take. So we focus on the front line. We make sure we have four marches on the front line and we take the front line healing blessing. The second priority for the blessings is the sixth march. There is a blessing called Conqueror, which gives you the possibility to, to just permanently use a 6th march, which would be a recruit. So now you have to think, um, 
you have four marches in the front line so you are already overloading the off lane of the opponent right now you have a sixth march which means if you know hey richard is going to take a substantial amount of damage in this fight you can have another march behind him helping him to kill the lane quicker or you can really go off the rails with your off lane or on the off lane and have three marches just immediately killing the opponent's off lane which is amazing against legendary um, guardians also another thing with the sixth march you have to think the golden kingdom is dynamic difficulty which means my 35 million power farm is not fighting the same difficulty as my 94 million power main just like i am probably not fighting the same difficulty as somebody like chisco right but what the what but you already locked in your marches right so the difficulty for you is set but now you have this blessing giving you a sixth march and the cpu cannot use a sixth march so this is op as hell and you gotta take it for the third priority we have healing improvement so there are at least three well i think there is four blessings that give you healing and we take all of them so healing improvement that, that means so there is another one that just flat out gives you um healing and then there's um blessings that give you well that actually enhance healing you already get but what a lot of people don't know I, i'm not a hundred percent sure if that's still the case but i would think so this blessing that improves healing effects actually also improves healing blessings so the healing you get is op as hell and it goes to the point where in the old golden kingdom i actually didn't lose troops i just out healed the damage of the opponent and i always ended up with 100 percent troops so third priority healing improvement fourth priority is frontline everything we have blessings for the frontline that give attack damage defense health and so on and we take all of them if we can get them the fifth priority is aoe damage and rate um, rege um generating rage so aoe damage there, for example there is a blessing that just flat out gives you 50 percent damage improvement on your aoe skills and we take that there's also one that gives you a chance to deal extra damage i think it is 300 percent and it's really good again i'm not a fan of chances but the blessing is good if you can get your hands on it take it otherwise um we are taking uh generating rage so there are blessings that just flat out give you 10 percent quicker rage generation but there's also a blessing that gives you 1000 rage at the beginning of a match and if you can get your hands on it take it um, because this basically means if you have some something like CL and YSG and you have good AOE blessings and a 1000 rage at the beginning of the match, you can just instantly kill green guardians. It's basically your skill pops off and they are dead. So we are going over the whole thing again. General rules, there is no specific path to take. Um, we don't take chances, we take the heal over the blessing, we avoid purple guardians. Then for the lineup, we have a tanky march with healing, we overload the offlane, we use healing commanders, we, well, one AoE march I wrote down, but basically just means one AoE march is enough. Um, don't go out of your way to have more. Then for the blessings, so frontline healing, the sixth march, the healing improvement, the frontline anything, and AOE damage and generating rage. And then we focus on the frontline. Like I said, like always have four marches on the frontline. And if you have you now, let me make this clear. With this idea, you are going to 
finish every single time which doesn't mean you're gonna copy this and you just finish every single time right away of course it needs a little bit of tinkering because your account is different and you're gonna have a lot of little blessings that you are not sure which ones to take and stuff like that try it a couple of times but i will guarantee absolutely guarantee you are going to finish every single time I think we went over everything. Well, one thing I forgot, of course, the recruits for the very first point, which is like the general gameplay. Um, we're gonna make sure we take the right recruits. And that's really it. Uh, like I said, I guarantee you're gonna finish it. So if you made it to this point of the video, thank you so, so much. It really means a lot. A lot of people keep asking me why I don't ask for likes and subscribes well it's basically in my mind it's basically begging for money and I don't like that because YouTube content is for free and if you are good at what you want to do or maybe you even just don't really care the likes and the subscribes are going to come you you will never have to ask for them However, one thing that is kind of um, difficult for me is viewer retention. So how long do people actually watch my videos and stuff like that? Because I want to keep them a little bare bones, not too much editing, not, you know, this baby entertainment where you talk with this unnatural voice and stuff like that. Um, so if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so, so much. It really means a lot and one little piece of information i am in kvk right now and like i said with this kvk i'm going to increase the output on my channel there's going to be more videos now um there's going definitely going to be a lot of live streaming especially you know with the fighting and stuff like that so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye